Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, let's do this. That's so awesome, man. A little bit of yeah, a little bit. All right, guys. Happy to see you all. Well, actually, I can't see you, but I do. I do see you in the uh, in the chat. So, what's up, everyone? And uh, welcome. It's Tuesday. It's uh, gonna say good morning to Amer my American friends and on the in the East Coast, right? Is the East Coast should be should be mm -hmm. should be morning on the mm -hmm. East Coast right now. We got mm -hmm. the middle of the day here in London. Uh, not London. I'm not even in London. I don't know what I don't know what I'm saying. You're not even in London, uh, but yeah, we're. But what I'm London saying is second. Europe. London is in Europe. And I'm in. Yeah. I'm at least I'm in Europe. Wow, London's in well, London. Yeah, London's in England. England. It Europe. is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you're, so you're telling me you Europe isn't a country? Oh well, there you go. Carry yeah. on. We've got some interesting <laughs> guests today. Really we interesting do. guests. That's going to be on the second half of this of this stream because uh we're going to be going through some trades we're gonna have news in half an hour and i think both jonathan and i are stuck in trades at the moment yeah um, well i i got stopped out of my my eu actually so that's it it is uh it is what it is yep it is what it is um but paul scott is going to come over and he's going to be he's a trader from the uk um, he was trading on the Copper Copper Central Exchange. You know, Jonathan will introduce him when he's on here. Um, yeah, I'm going to introduce uh, him when when it, when it gets on. So, yeah, 25 we'll years that. of experience. It's very yeah. very cool. Again, you know, inst institutional okay. trader, and uh, you know when, to... what you know when you when you. What's up with your screen? Is it is he is there is there an extra screen on there? You see on the camera there. So you see something something in the way of your camera. Yeah, what this? Yeah, yeah, it's just my screen, man. I got two. I got the screen right. here. Three screens. Nice, nice, your nice. setup's nice, though. Yo, it is. Your setup it is. is. I like nice, it. Bro. Like it. I like it. Big man. I got setup. my four. I got. I got my four screen. Well, actually, I got five because I got the. I got the. I'm actually watching one of the screens right now. As you can see, I'm watching right into your faces, but that's actually a screen. So I got the camera behind a nice. glass. A thing and then i have a screen attached to it so i can look you know what they say about uh bigger the screen bigger the money That's yeah bigger the profit job, that is the more you know the more the more screens you have the more the more money obviously yeah. uh, <laughs> so you're in uh, you're in the eu right now well i oh. was i was on the stream with jordan from trade delicious this morning and we both were yeah. trading so i've been in this this trade um, let me go. I'll go through it in a minute. I'm just trying to sort out the the, the chat here to make sure that we're not going to have any spamming. So I'm just got to remember how to do this. So content. I can do that. You're, you're you're going through the settings, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm on it pretty much now. So it'll just take. All me right. Some Perfect. Um, make so, sure that's done. Yesterday we it had a, we had a really good. Uh, Yesterday we had a really good good chat comments, very good comments, very good questions. So what what I did was I set a limit to uh, a one minute, so people could all only comment like every thirty seconds, I believe, or or sixty second, and that worked really well actually. So we had quality questions coming in, and a lot of um, been able to uh, go through all of that. So uh, yeah, guys, if you do have any questions, let us know and. Uh, you might be joining here thinking that you know Paul Scott is coming on right now, but he's actually coming on in uh, the second half of the stream. But if you do have any questions to him, you can actually you can ask them right because we will we will start them and of course save the the best uh, the best comments. Excuse me. Indeed, um, uh, you want to learn from this guy seriously. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I I. Uh, this is the first time uh, you know having him on the the. On the live show, I've looked him up, and 
I'm very interested to hear what he has to say about, you know, the simplicity of looking at key levels and, you know, how the banks trades and how the banks look at levels, you know, and an interesting fact is like when we have these, when we have, because honestly, like we've had some really great traders with, with, you know, decades of experience on this live stream and they're, they all have one thing in common. They're, they have a very simple approach to to trading. So if you're starting out, it's usually how it goes. Like you're starting out and you're starting out with all these different indicators and they have the most advanced uh, system. And you think like, oh, the more advanced I can make my system, the better, the more money I'm going to make. Right. But like you see, the experienced traders, they 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 kind of tone it down with the indicators and everything they have. And they try to find a, a, a simple approach. And I think that's what we're going to see here today. So I'm very going to be very interesting to hear what he has to say about that. So EU, I'm uh, very uh, not <laughs> I, li I like the graphics here, man. Love it. Yeah, let me turn the graphics off. I just wanted to so, talk about the trade that I've got open on EU. Yeah, sure, um, sure. We'll do a little bit of a breakdown of what I saw and then we can have a look and see what you saw. Because I know you had a smaller trade idea um, on a um, on a smaller time frame, sorry. So you had quite a, probably a tighter stop loss than I, than I had. So originally when I came in this morning, so I'm going to get rid of all of these levels. And obviously we've been trading, we've been trading EU, wow, quite a lot on these streams, to be honest, man. We're trading EU pretty yeah. much every single day. And yeah. if, you, if you've been around, you've seen us trade this last week. So we had this big move last week you've also seen us trade this part of the leg and now we've been trading this part of the leg my overall thought is that i really think that eu is trying to push up to these levels to the eight seven five eight just these higher areas where you see quite a lot of support and resistance you see res uh, support you see quite a churn of uh, support resistance also here also here and i really do think it really wants to visit that level once again so that's the 8758 level now on the four hour i had a look on the four hour and this is the part of the price action that i was looking at and again take took my fib i wanted to see where price was in comparison to uh, the fibs and the ema and i saw this quite big uh, retracement candle down to this ema that was turning into a bit of a, a pin bar which was showing quite a lot of support in these areas these areas 50 uh 50 fib touched the uh the 21 ema on the four hour and you could you could see that it had nice a little a good reaction then I've gone down to the lower time frames. I noticed obviously we've got a support here with the 50 EMA, 50 fibs, all of that just looks for a fantastic long position. And I did take the long position. Um, and you can see here the two positions that I took. I took one here, right on, uh, right off the, this first, um, this first tap of support. And then I took another position straight on afterwards as well. Now, throughout the day, we saw price come back down on news. So there was a lot of news in the morning around Euro. I had an idea that this would actually turn into a wick, which it did. And then our price pushed up. What I didn't think was going to happen was this move here. Now, this is this move here is kind of annoying. I'm not going to lie um, <laughs> because it's quite indecisive. It's not really... It's not really price action that I want to be seeing just before news comes out uh, for the U uh, for the dollar. Um, because it's very, stuff, um, yeah, it's very... it's kind of holding in this area right now, and it it's unfortunate lot... because it was really that you know that move kind of because if you remove that whole recent downtrend, it, it looks perfect. Like you you have that a uh, possible break of structure. So yeah, I'm. Um... The current move that we've seen but yeah we're moving we're moving higher now it looks uh so we found a little bit of support again so this is what you know i'm just trying to see what actually happens now those are the current trades in my stops are actually here both stops i'm risking about uh one and a half percent on this account and news is coming out in 20 minutes so how much how close is it to my stops i got an eight pip stop 
so it's quite tight especially when news is coming out we'll have to see what happens but i could be taking an hour live on stream today because i'm not going to be removing any size i don't think but that was uh i believe i believe your stop loss is in a great position it's um i had uh, like I, I actually took two trades on eu today and uh <clears throat> i i believe um so I can I can show it's basically based on yeah. so it's on on um, like I said it's on on EU as well and uh, the whole idea so the first trade I believe yeah so the first trade was actually taken based on we had we had this structure so the first trade was actually taken based on the the, the retest of this level so that was a short the first. I wanted to, uh, so I believe I entered somewhere around this area, had my TP at the lows and then stop loss up here. So that was the, 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 the first idea. Now mm -hmm. I, I've, I've removed all the levels and indicator because it's, it's, it's quite messy when it's easier to show, uh, the, the yeah. actual idea like this. So, so for people, sorry, Jonathan, for people asking about the news. Yeah. It's actually at 5 PM, the news, sorry, the PMIs. The US PMIs um, are actually coming out at 5 p.m. So I'll probably be be out of these positions. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll probably be wrapping up the stream at at, at that point. But uh, yeah, we'll see. <coughs> so yeah, that was the uh, that was the 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 short trade. And then obviously, as you can see, it did it did come down, right? But I didn't I didn't manage to secure the position at that point. So I got stopped out on that one. Now what I what I started seeing here was a a shift uh, a shift here of in, in in structure basically so we got that downtrend i went short my short got invalidated and now we're seeing something like this so i'm thinking what if you know can we get in on a break and retest here can we and i you know have an entry here perhaps and uh that basically what that looked like was this you know nice so yeah. i i i did I think the I think the short idea I could have skipped that one. I think that was, you know, I don't know. I, I could probably have skipped that one, but I kind of like the idea of you know being short below this level and then going long above. So I, I wanted to see that move down to the weekly opens. Right here, you have the weekly opens. I'm thinking, you know, maybe maybe because the weekly open haven't been uh, haven't been tested. So well, it's been tested here almost, but it haven't really been tested a lot. So I think that might act as a good support and then looking at price action i i saw this and i'm thinking great. yeah this looks good you know good. It, it, yeah this looks great but then obviously price decided to now form a downtrend so now the price action i'm seeing here is actually like we had a possible uptrend here you know something like this but now we have a, like a slow bleed to the downside and I don't know, like I'm not getting a good sense of direction. I do, however, like what, what you've showed here on like the four hour. Um, so if you look at the bigger picture here, you can kind of see how. Scott Paul, rate. the institutional trader, just for this trader, do not support retail. This is not, <laughs> how, this is not, yeah, this is definitely not how banks trade. We, we are aware this is how we trade. Paul Scott is coming in. Uh, 40 minutes and then you can come in you can ask him all the questions that you want yeah obviously we're not i'm i'm not i'm not sitting at a bank you know i'm not this is not an institution this is this is my my office at home um <laughs> and 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 i'm you know i'm treating i got stochastic sorry so i got ema so much out obviously this is not what banks are doing they're they're not i'm not i'm not gonna you know what, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna trade off uh, one minute time frames no, they trade off of 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 RSI on the one minute. They usually they usually just look at RSI. That's that's from what I've what I've heard. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we're gonna be hearing more about that. So yeah, that wick down, I kind of I kind of like because you have not only did you have the the EMA that you showed, but you also have like a level going straight through here. And it's yeah. kind of like it's it's a nice retest here. So I'm thinking, you know, there is upside potential here. Okay, there is upside potential. There's also <laughs> the potential to kind of go down lower. But at this point, you know, uh, at this point, what what happens on the lower time frames? I'm 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 not I'm, I don't really have a good sense of of direction here. You know, yeah. Um, 
And you know what? What I'm going to do here is uh, I, I really I like the way you're able to uh, uh, add. So I can I. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to select all my long and short uh, positions here. Can I, I just want to add though, that that long position is a yeah. good long position. That is, you know, in a lot of other times, yeah. I feel like I would have carried on to push yeah. to push forward further. Uh, so, yeah. It's good good position that was yeah i think i think it's it's important when when we're going through the trades it's important to realize you know wh where where do we have the where do we have the uh ah oh, sorry man what was right. I'm, I'm i'm saying something yeah it's important to realize there's a difference between a good good trade and a bad trade obviously but there's you know a, a losing trade can also be a uh, um you know, a, a losing trade can also be a bad yeah, trade. I mean, trade. a good trade. A good trade. So yeah. in yeah, exactly. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna stop reading the comments when I try to explain something. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the the break and read this here in the five minute aligns with the EMAs and everything. I think that's that's it's a good trade, but it's a loser. Now I want to show you something here that I'm gonna be doing in in trading view. So I'm gonna select these three uh, tools here. I'm gonna right click here in this menu called the. Uh, the object tree, I'm going to right click here. I'm going to press create a group of drawings and I'm going to rename this uh, longs yeah. and yeah. shorts. Okay. Yeah. What happens now is I'm going to, I can easily just hide these. So now these are all are, are my previous trades. So maybe on a Friday or on the weekend when I'm not trading, I can select this folder here and uh, show them all and then go through them, right? And you can have different folders for each week. So one folder for each week, perhaps you can have folders within folders, but it's a really great way of hiding hiding uh, drawings without removing them because sometimes you remove a drawing, but you might want to go back and look at the trade, how you could have done things differently. So I think that's also one of the uh, one of the good things of having um, trading on on one pair is I can uh, I can have everything on here, and it's very easily accessible. Should we have a look at? Do you want to have a look at gold? Because I know yeah. some people are always interested in gold. Gold's been shooting up. Now, yeah, holy shit! Look at that. This moment, <laughs> wow. gold's been shooting up. Yeah. Now wow. I don't really see any entry. Unless you get a retracement back down to the top of the range for a long, for a short, maybe you can find a higher time frame level, find a higher time frame level and see if you get a double top. Well, there's not really Wait, any high time frame yeah, levels. There's, there's all like, no, this, yeah, that's what about on the like, monthly? Is this all time highs? Know, can, uh, is this really all time highs? Oh, it is. Wow. We're actually approaching all-time highs. You can't. You can't really do. You can't really do anything on it. I personally wouldn't be. I personally <laughs> wouldn't be longing. I wouldn't be shorting. I'd literally just be sitting and watching. Yeah. Nothing, well. Nothing. Well, you know, when it, it's not really at all-time highs. I think all-time highs is, is this wick, yeah. obviously, right here. Yeah. But once gold enters all-time highs, I think. I I don't know. Like from from what I've seen, is as soon as something enters all-time highs, all the you know regular real retail traders they come in and they say how can i short this while yeah. from my experience when something breaks out into all-time highs you want to make sure you're exposed because there's no ceiling there's no resistance there's there's no way of knowing when that that move is going to stop so instead of trying to catch a falling knife or catch i guess in this case catch a knife that someone's throwing to the upside uh you want to be careful uh, with, e with e shorting. Email me like now, this. 777. I've spoken to probably like five different 777s. So email me right now, right this wow. second, while you're on here. So looking, yeah, at, like, looking at looking at entries here. Well, I think for me, there's there's an obvious like. So if if it's an obvious level here, right? So if this makes sense on the lower time frames and and it, we haven't retested this level, yeah. So to me, I think. Um, gonna see if we can find a, a decent level here. Yeah, I, I don't know because if we 
on the on the one hour and the four hour, this looks like a good level where you might want to be a buyer, but only. Oh, no. I think that They've would have been. Had more, that, you know? that, yeah, that 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 retracement there has already yeah. had its retracement. It's already pushed out. If it then goes and breaks that, and then goes back up, then I would short it actually. To be honest, because yeah. it's already you know, it's already continuating con continuation with its structure. If it starts breaking back that back that structure, and it can't get past you know that higher high, then should be your sign. Okay, maybe I can short this back to the top of that range. That's a nice trade. If you can, isn't it? Is, that trade. Yeah, isn't it amazing though that you know gold is at all time highs as as uh, as well as Bitcoin. So we got Bitcoin. Ooh. You know, obviously. Ooh. It's at sixty, almost sixty-eight. Uh, so we're we're zero point. Uh, we've reached zero zero point twenty-two percent from from all-time high. So the high of this candle is actually sixty. Um, shall I play the music? Or shall I play the music? I think it's time we play the music for Bitcoin. Go ahead. You ready? Sixty-eighth. Just yeah, make, go go ahead, man. Make sure everybody's uh, you know your your mics and your headset aren't. You know, over loud because this is gonna. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> this is for Bitcoin. Everybody, pump up the price action. All right, it's a little bit for gold as well. Gotta give. And this is a little bit for gold, of course. Because gotta, be, gotta give right. Peter Schiff a, a chance. Yeah, but yeah, that was uh Dude, the high of this candle is Yeah, so you, you could definitely say that Bitcoin is is is, is testing or has tested all time highs. I mean the high of of this candle bit stamp is sixty eight thousand eight hundred and fifty. So we're two hundred and two hundred and fifty dollars from uh from all time highs. Actually we're a hundred fifty dollars from all time highs. EU has um, been it's, super, super, super annoying. Mm. Yeah, I uh, I feel like you know I I feel like I I want to be in a trade, which is never a good thing. Um, but this is right now. I'm looking at this and uh, like I'm looking what what the one minute is doing. Okay, no, this is this is not bad. It's not bad. Okay, now we're all right. Be a little mini trade there. Yeah, I feel like I have to. I really just wanted to see, you know, because it's, it's it's not it's not breaking down here. It hasn't broken down. Come up, you know, ranged a little bit come back down hasn't broken the lows and now it's pushing up if it can push back up above these highs then i'll be a little bit i'll be a lot happier oh there we go yeah so that's on the you're on the one minute now right yeah but it's got seven seconds for that to turn into a wick right now and imagine if that just turns into a big long wick to the downside which it hasn't <laughs> well yeah but it's uh I'm looking at this now and I think, um, yeah, I definitely feel like I want to be in a trade, but I sh probably shouldn't, but it's, what, um, what side, would, what, if you were to get into this trade man, right now, what side would you be taking? Well, I, I, I'd like to say short, but I think that's because I'm just influenced by what price is doing at this very moment. Because if I, if I do zoom out, like, I don't know, man, I think, um, with, I don't know, man, like with Bitcoin pumping and we've got gold moving to the upside, I think they're, they're kind of like, it feels like, it just feels like EURUSD should be a, a risk on move to the upside. But we're looking at the lower time frames, so I, I kind of like the idea of, of seeing that move down to the, uh, to the weekly open around uh, 84. Yeah, it's really, it's really, but it, to be fair, it's been struggling in this this overall area 
for quite yeah. a while, you know. Like at the end of the day, if we go onto the fort, how many wicks have we got up here? All of this, let me turn off history. Just all of this. Now the four hour, let's have a look at this four hour. Four hour looks heavy to the downside, in all honesty. Looks a little bit heavy. It hasn't you would have liked to have seen the continuation from this kind of candle that's shown quite a lot of quite a lot of buying you would have liked to have seen a, a continuation up but now it's it's just looking heavy and it's at an area of quite a lot of uh quite a lot of resistance and it's not doing anything so i'm going to close out this position i'm not happy with it i think that's that's the best the best thing to do here <laughs> yeah but if it's showing weakness and i'm closing out of my long position let's see what we can do with going short yeah, I mean now I, I I think at this point we I mean we definitely add supporters. I, I don't know, like if is 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 it a good idea to uh start I'm selling at three, support? Risk, risking three hundred dollars. It's not I, I don't mind risking three hundred dollars. That's not even half a percent of the, the overall account. This other account that I've got open at the moment, that's it, you know, I took the L on that. I'm not going in any anymore, but this account I'm happy because we've we, we've we've made quite a big buffer to be honest. Yeah, we've got a nice big buffer, and we can take a little bit more risk here. Obviously, this 50 EMA. The reason why I've got in here, and this is actually I've gotten short on support. To be fair, probably why everybody's yeah. looking like, what is this guy doing? He's got short in. But it, how many times you know you've got these wicks, you've got these wicks, you've shown so much strength, pushed up, grinded down tried to find support tried again to push back up and now it's breaking down again like why would i be why would i stay long we were just married to a bias right there um no definitely definitely agree uh, i agree with that and it's kind of breaking down now so it it uh, let's, let's see where it could potentially go to if it does i think i think we're gonna go down to 80 84 area at the, the weekly open so I'm going to look at, see if there's a decent risk to reward here. And and there is a okay risk to reward. So maybe I'll put in, put in some limit orders for, to get now, filled on this, a move higher. Yeah. If this also comes back up, you know, like a little bit of a retrace, I can add to this position. You know, I've only got 300 risk on this. So if this comes, if it comes to all of these wicks here, and then takes a little bit of a retest. What I would like to see, though, is it breaks down and closes up under these wicks, comes back, retests these areas, and then we can add, you know, another 10 lots in, to be honest, because we've only risking $300 here. We can add another 10 lots at $600 or so. That's coming up to the 1% risk that we normally take. <clears throat> All right, so I think my short idea is gone. It's just it's breaking down now, so I think that's the entry is gone here. Yeah. That's a Super good entry. Happy. Super happy I got out of the position. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you, you <laughs> is that correct? Yeah. Like, this long, I'm flipping short. That's yeah. If this yeah. if this makes you money, that's insane. It's very good. A very good move. Man, can you hear me pour yeah, my coffee? Mm. Ooh. I got to get that poop coffee. I remember we talked about that in the beginning. I've spoken to probably seven people with the same user. Send me an email right now and I'll be able to help you with the giveaway. Everybody else has got them. I'm still waiting on you. Um, Ricardo is saying check your email. I'm pretty sure he's, he's checking the email all the time. Yeah. I will check while I'm in this trade. Let's have a look. All right, guys. So uh, just 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 to comment on this, like it's, the 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 problem here is that we have a process that is not perfect when giving away no, the no, no, accounts. No, say, like, it is a perfect process. Our process is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fantastic process, um, but but there's a lot of very smart scammers out there. A lot of very smart scammers, um, and if you do not, you know, send all your you know the full name your email like we've requested you to, to do and somebody else goes and does it you know they can just take 
take the account off you. So, yeah. Okay. So let's have a look. Where are we getting in? Oh, what are we saying? Should we add? Yeah, I, I've, I've just I've opened the position right here. Position. Let's see if we can get a little bit more of a push. No. Um, let's see. Come on. Do I really want to add on this particular candle? I'll add here. So probably 200 now. So this, okay. So we're risking about half a percent now on this particular trade. We could see an L right now if it pushes up higher. Let's see, we got the five minute candle. Yeah, I, I'd like to I'd like to see the five minute candle closing. Let's see if I switch to my screen here. This is basically I wanna I wanna close the position if it goes up here. And I want this five minute candle ideally to close like below this level here. I think that yeah. um yeah, that's right. This guy got it got an account. Now I uh, do we have any do we have anyone Who's close to like passing the challenges that has one account? Do we know that? Is there any way for us to we, check that? I, I can speak to one of the guys that we had. We had a guy that said he wanted to come onto the stream once he passed into second stage. I need to double check what's going on with him. Because that would be amazing. That would be really cool to like give away an account here live and then have that same person come on live and like talk about his trading with that should account. That would be really do, cool. Should we do a poll? Do a quick poll before this goes anywhere. Is this gonna hit Alex's stop loss? Let's see who who believes in us, Jonathan. Let's see who <laughs> believes. Let me let me do it quickly before before it actually does anything on the price. How do I go? Well, sometimes I feel like such an old man with YouTube, man. Well, look at that look at that rejection come on it looks beautiful in the one minute if we can just have this there five minute go. candle closing oh, there we go look at that look at that uh, mm, still turning into a wick though <laughs> <laughs> oh look at that that's a mean wick no Ooh. man look at that one minute that's like it screams Ooh. bullish Ooh. Really oh like man you, I know, but mate, loads of people with the same name and everything has emailed me as well. So email me right now, please. Right now, right this second. Take a screenshot of this chat thing. Okay. Ooh. ooh, ooh. So. And we're fucked. No, not necessarily not yet. The stops are pretty close. Price has changed changed its character just a little bit, you know, breaking and actually closing under the 15 EMA. My stops are probably gonna get here. Are we gonna take an L for the first time on stream? Actually, I don't think it's the first time, but it's the first time in a while we've taken an L live. Oh yeah. yeah. Had a good had a good looking winner yesterday, actually. Yeah. That's it. It's it's going. It's going. It's going. Now it's gone. It's totally taking it. Come on. Do something. <laughs> I hate when it teases us like this. Dude, you know, like if this. Yeah, I don't know. Is it? This five minute candle, it's uh this is this is tough prize action though, to be honest. Like this super, 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 super chocolate. Yeah. And, and you wow, know, I, I can I've lost 370, so nearly half an hour. Losing this, that will probably be taking me up to about, you know, just under an hour of a loss today. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That is a loss, ladies and gentlemen. 
I wonder, I wonder if that would have been. Now, wouldn't that be disgusting if it comes right back down? You know, sometimes, like right, right after the trade, I. Let's see. So... I ask. And I ask myself, is this a trade I would have taken in live in in, in when back testing? And, so we uh, held that all, you know, pretty much all day. We held the long, closed out the long, and then we've got short, and then we got taken out. Be interesting to see what it actually does now. See if it actually breaks the breaks these highs, and if it breaks these highs, then you know it's in play for, for those high levels of what we're targeting today. Yeah, definitely. If it breaks, if it breaks up uh, for me at least, I'm looking at some. I'm looking at this this level here, and um, if we can, uh, because honestly, like you look at this, and it's just yeah, it's just all over the place here. I think we had we had some good moves. I like I like this structure. I think that's decent. And then you have this one right here. Mm -hmm. And I think this like it did. You you had something good going here, and then on that one. But now I don't know. Like it. Like it didn't it didn't break under those lows. But with the overall price action being so choppy at the moment, it's like, oh gosh, I can't be surprised yeah. now if it just like makes all of that massive wick and just starts breaking down. But I'm definitely, I'm definitely happy I got out of the other position on the other account for a small loss, even though that price did come through and. Someone in the comments says your your trading is not consistent. Ooh. And, 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 and another you gotta, one says, you gotta check you gotta check the other videos, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> this is our first this is yeah. probably our first loss. Our first loss in the last three weeks on stream. Not saying it's my first loss in three weeks, yeah, but actually in I think I think I think what he means is that maybe maybe your um your setup is your your setups are not the when when they don't look the same. It's uh, easy to think that you're not consistent, but you're you're you're, you're not you're not, you're not you don't have a systematic way of trading. You're more of a discretionary not trading. Discretionary trader. Yeah, I don't. I so, have different different tex techniques of getting into trades. Definitely don't take the same trades. But oh, look at that pushing up. Uh, Have a look what ah oh, look at that wick on gold i bet people are looking at that now like short 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 yeah oh yeah this to be fair you I mean, can look I at that as if we've been I wonder what like if, are like do. imagine imagine if this candle is just going to close you know down here for some reason in 20 minutes it's just going to close down here yeah that that would maybe be good for a short have you some massive and if the, like if if this 4 hour candle for some reason is going to close as a 4 hour bearish engulfing candle with a big with a big wick on like probably a a pin bar and that that would probably signal a a short Got five minutes left. Sense. Five minutes left on a close of the fifteen minute on EU. Let's see, but prices, prices, uh, <clears throat> price is interesting at the moment. Yeah, I think some days, you know, some days it's just. Um, not meant to be traded in, in, in a certain way. Like I, I had a trade yesterday. Let's see if I can find that one. Yeah, so I had a trade yesterday and that was just Yeah, trading yesterday was fun, man. It was good. 
yeah, while you so guys are in, that... uh, in a really nice trade. Yeah, and I think this kind of follows follows the overall structure of what what I'm what I'm looking for. And then you had the trades today. This is not not showing the same things here. And I think that's because you know you have. Yeah, I mean, price action is looking way different today than what it used you did yesterday. Let's look at GU. That's a good one. This looks really good for long. See now that that's the same structure we're looking on on pound. If you go on the you, fifteen minute, I bet that 200, 200 EMA is right underneath. Yeah. yeah wow that's that is so i think i think stuff. maybe oh so let's see the 15 stuff. minute now the problem is I, i'd like the 15 minutes again close above i'm not i'm not liking this wick okay see you eu I'm, I'm trying to all right so Look at EU. EU. That is just absolute yeah. disgusting in the EU. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> oh. Good God, look at that. It took took out the stops and then starts moving down. What, the, what are we doing, voice, man? Stop. Like, like, what the hell? This is... Uh, okay. so, uh, this is the shit. Yeah. Well, th this is the shit that happens when, when you're in... When you know when you start start saying things like you know price action is weird you know things like that it's uh, usually time to be uh, to be careful you know because mm. yeah this is this is uh, you got you got this level here I think that's like pretty pretty decent level let's see what happens now with the five minute. Yeah, okay, that's nice push down. Let's see if it can close. We got Paul Scott coming in very soon. Yep. That's that is a pretty disgusting move though. Really disgusting. Yeah. 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 I would be lying to say that I didn't get back in. Uh, wait, I mean, you're talking about five groups? Yeah, but I mean, this is... Um, what I'm watching now, you know, with, with, with the weekly open here, I think that, you know, that's my support. However, I mean, yeah, now we just, we're just shorting support at this point. But it's kind it, of it it's looks... kind of lost. Yeah, it's kind of looks a little bit heavy. It's failed to break up. Yeah, I'm watching. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this area here. I don't think. I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think this is a way. Like, I, I would love to see it break down like this. That would be nice. For now, it's just all over the place. I think it's uh, a bit difficult. A bit difficult. It's uh, tough. Yeah. Thank you very much, Better. <laughs> <laughs> you look very handsome as well with your glasses and hair. Okay. So let me have a look at uh, this email. Yeah, the shorts, the shot does look dis disgusting. I think you're trying to say disgusting, and then definitely, it definitely does. It definitely does. It doesn't look very good. All right, my positional link is going good. I think it's a high leverage play for me, so I'm just thinking.
thinking this is if Bitcoin is going to break out, we're going to see an altcoin run. I think I got my money on on Link here. FTM That's... baby, yo FTM. Oh man, it, it really did break out. Yeah, FTM that was one of the. Is, uh... It was one of the all coins I had on my list to list to buy. Let's see if GMT has been breaking out. I haven't. I need to buy some more GMT. All right. Pepe. Wow. That was a bad. That was a bag. Bun, bundle. Bundle. A bag fumble wow. from me. I really, really lost the bag on um, on Pepe. That's almost a thousand percent from the lows. Insane. Someone's writing Luna. Is Luna is not a thing, or, it, or I yeah, have Luna. This looks good. Might actually. This looks like healthy price action to me. Why is this at one point one though? Shouldn't it be like removed from it's, everywhere? It should be weird. Um, let me. What? My mic, I think, is a little bit loud. Let me turn my mic down. I think it's good. I think it's good. We'll give it a couple more minutes and we will go on a small break and then we'll bring in Paul Scott. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, do you want to do that? Should we jump in now? We'll, we'll give it actually because we don't want the 10 minutes. We want him to come in on the break. But we'll give it another little bit of time. Yeah, sure, sure. We are getting we are Scruffy getting, back tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> Scruffy. Sorry, man. Well, actually, actually, he's ill at the moment. Hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully, he will be feeling a little bit better and he will be able to come in tomorrow. Um, what's What's your view on gold now? Red candle is down. I would not touch gold personally. And I would. I would be careful. I wouldn't touch it. I really wouldn't. You don't want to be shorting it. Now, look, if it comes back up to retest that area and you get a double double top and then you've got a break of the neckline retest of that area, then maybe that's your signal to short. But at the moment, from what we can see, I wouldn't touch it. Sit, sit yeah. back and relax. Um, like a lot of uh, a lot of assets, you know, there's a lot of chop today. So we have a it's it's a pretty decent retest right here. I mean, this is if if this would just be any any other any other market, this uh, this looks like a possible long. But I mean, nah. I mean, this wick and the one hour. It's just when you had a strong move like this one, and you get a wick like this, and it's just I don't know. Well, that. You wouldn't want to touch it though because you literally don't unless your strategy is you know unless you can see what's going on with within that candle imagine in, you can see all of those like trap traders that have gone long right now and then price breaks down underneath you can assume that they're going to turn around and cut their trades and they're pushing price lower but you can't in cfds you can't see anything you know you're basically just gambling on which side is it going to go and from looking at that it's not a very good I don't know if you could gamble on, not gamble, but if you can take a good bet on that. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, I'd stay out of it unless you're unless there's a gold trader in here that has a good uh, a good analysis. Yeah. Now EU is just all over the place here. Still holding. Still holding support. <clears throat> Should we go on the break? Let's go on the break and then we can uh, see what happens. Wow, what's uh, oh, your yen? Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of movement, but not a lot of movement that 
so Samuel, we're migrating everybody very slowly. So we want to make sure that everything is working fine. So everything, once everybody is migrated, it shouldn't take longer than a week. Um, but depending what your account is doing, we'll, you're going to be looked after. Don't worry. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's take a break. Let's take a break. Perfect. We'll be back we'll see in you about in ten minutes. Ten minutes time.
All right, welcome back, everyone. Let me uh, let me introduce you all to uh, today's guest. It's a big, it's a big honor. This guy has over 25 years experience trading at an institutional level. He started out way back at the London Metal Exchange, if I'm not mistaken, before specializing in the uh, in the forex market. And he's been trading for many different uh, hedge funds and banks like. Uh, Goldman Sachs, HP, uh, HSBC, to name a few. And he's here today to talk with us about how the banks actually trade. Paul Scott, welcome, man. Happy to have oh, you here. Uh, can you hear me? I can yes. hear you. <laughs> you can hear me good. Thank God for that. I couldn't hear you for a minute. I was like panicking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as you do. Right. So, yes, indeed. Now, I started out, God, 1994, probably way before both of you were born. Um, so, yeah, 30 years this year. Um, yeah, I started out, cut my teeth on what's known as the London Metal Exchange. It's the last open outcry market left in Europe. Um, I started at a company called Credit Leonay, which is Credit Leonay Rouse, which was then taken over by Calion, which was then taken over and taken over again. Um, I then moved from there to a company called Sukden UK Limited, which is now Sukden uh, Financial. Um, God, we've traded on an open outcry market. Um, like I say, totally unique experience. Um, I've spoken to Alex about this before, but I mean, it, it is yeah. its amazing. Do you know what I mean? There's no other job like it on the planet. Um, it's nuts when you've got, you know, five, six hundred people shouting and screaming, you know, markets going absolutely crazy. You, but you know, other times, you know, you know, market will be dead, but then you just have to be able to switch it on because, and I'll tell you a funny story about that later. Um, when we had one of those days and then it just all kicked off and it was probably the funniest experience I've ever had on a trading floor because, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll 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 get into that, but yeah. yeah it's, first, it's, first of all, it's mate. It's really nice to see because we've been trying to do this for a long and time. You, yeah, we we we've been doing, we've been communicating. I first spoke to you when you and um, were a speaker at the the trading event that we did in London. And yeah, you're probably the only. I shouldn't say this, but you were probably one of the only down to earth people in the room that I saw you, and I obviously I I heard that you're going to be speaking. And we got chatting, and yeah. I had to bring you on for the first time and afterwards we had so many requests to bring you uh, to bring you back and because of everything that happened you know it's just stuff yeah. life got into it got into the way a little bit but it's fantastic to see you back you know and uh, we've changed the layouts a little bit so now you're we're actually doing this live yes we've got more guests more people um yep. and i'm glad they're going to be able to benefit from from your knowledge and paul's device is gone <laughs> Oh God! Well, uh, <laughs> I think he so can he can hear as well. You well if you can hear me, Paul, has, Alex has been saying great things about you. I'm super happy to to have you on here. And as soon as your camera is is back and connected, we we're gonna go into uh, and talk about some uh, real interest. There he is. Welcome right. back. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank God for that. That's all right. I've got this this gaming computer. I'm not really sure if it's set up for streaming. And, I don't know. I just bought it because the kids wanted a computer so that they could do some stuff on. And come, on, I'm 46 now. Jesus, when I started, we had Windows 95 and we Windows 11. I don't know what I'm bloody doing. But um, yeah, no, indeed, it's it's it was lovely to you know sort of be able to give or the opportunity to to obviously speak at the event last year. Um, I mean, in all honesty, um, between me, you, and all of the people that are watching, I just went there to piss people off. <laughs> I've just, I've, I've just I, like, I, I've noticed that. Yes, I've been people, which is probably why I haven't been invited back this year. But you know, it doesn't matter. Um, at least some people got to hear what I had to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's it's for me. It's you know, that's the first event I've ever spoken at in a live situation. Um, obviously, I've done you know various interviews, web, whatever you call them, um, yeah. podcasts and stuff over the years. But it's just to get there and just say hey look it's you know whatever you think trading is um at the top table 
it's not quite what you guys do um and obviously you know i've been trying to share that knowledge with people over the last it's going to be eight years this year and it's been fun it's been really nice to you know sort of open people's eyes and just say hey look you know there's a, every market's the same it's all traded in the same way we all understand it in the same way you know contract specifications yes they change and you have a slight you know different terminology and things like that but fundamentally it's all this it's, it's all the same so for me it's like i can look at any market um and we'll go through this in a little bit but any market i can mark up my levels and i can say right i am going to be patient enough to wait for markets to get to specific prices before i'm going to engage and i think you know a lot of people sort of in the in the retail space <sighs> They want to be in a trade for the sake of being in a trade, you know, and especially when I mm. speak to a lot of the younger guys these days, you know, they go, oh, I'm a member of this Discord group and that Discord group. And, you know, I'm talking to them and the bloody thing's got ping, 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 ping in the background. Yeah. And for me, it's just like, hey, look, as much as you want to be doing it and you want to feel part of a community, which is OK, you have to make your own decisions and don't be swayed by you know all this information that's coming in or other people's opinions you know what i mean you, you really sort of want to be steadfast in what you're doing but um yeah no i mean thanks for having me back on mate i, I know you've you, you've life sort of really got in the way and i was like oh bless yeah. you and <laughs> i see you got back, um uh, yeah no bruises or nothing like that that's good <laughs> no, gone got my arms and legs thank god you know and what would i do without my right arm you know exactly uh, there you go. <laughs> um but no, yeah I'm, I'm very... so, no, go ahead, Alex. Go ahead. Say is one of the things that we did touch on is obviously the big difference between you know retail traders and how the education is for institutional level traders and i think one yeah. of the biggest issues is the the fact that retail get pulled in with all this marketing stuff with all like ib agreements that you know their educator have got their educators yeah. have got or you know the you know broker different kind of broker agreements that they get sold to do you want to just tell us a little bit about your kind of insights within that world and what kind of conflict of interest some of these trade ed educators may have and why they kind of lead maybe the retail um retail education the wrong direction could I be really frank? Go be as frank as you want. We can spare yeah, it. Of course, man. You. You're 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 on here to uh spread yeah. whatever whatever knowledge you want here, man. Okay. Go ahead. So for me, um always conflicts of interest. Uh first one for me is if you log on to a broker and it has an educational section. I mean, that's just taking the piss completely. I mean, who, who the hell was going to teach you to take the broker's money? I mean, that's just, that's a massive conflict of interest. Uh, you then have, um, <laughs> dare we say his name, um, he spends a lot of money on YouTube advertising and he's, he's buggered off now to Dubai um because he's obviously pissed mm -hmm. off so many people around the world with his certainly shit education um i think we know who i'm talking about yes yeah. there's a bunch yeah. of them out there aren't they yeah. mr permitan yeah. mr permitan had to leave the uk because i think yeah he kind of annoyed a lot of people and i think he went over to uh maybe new zealand or australia and annoyed people over there now he's in dubai bless him but i mean if you've got mm -hmm. to spend you know sort of upwards of half a million pound a month on advertising where you are you got to ask where does that money come from uh, it comes from unsuspecting people and it's it is all about marketing like you touched upon alex and it, it's it, it's terrible i mean it's not a proper education um you've got again like you said you know people sign up with my course you've got to sign up with this broker and of course the conflict of interest there is is they're getting paid on the back end whether you win or lose so fr frankly they don't give a toss if you win or lose they're just getting paid at the end of the day so there are huge conflicts of interest, you know, IB agreements. Oh God, the amount of people that send me messages on LinkedIn. Hi, would you like to be an IB for me? I'm like, no, I don't IB for anybody. It's a huge conflict of interest. And for me personally, it's like, look, whoever I teach or whatever, or whoever I speak to, you're free to trade with whoever the hell you like. You know, I'm not going to sit there and be affiliated with anybody because, again, that causes a conflict of interest for me. You know, I can advise people, not advise because we're not allowed to advise. It's not financial advice, as it says at the bottom. Um, but then when people are talking to me and they say, you know, 
where would you go? And I would say, well, look, go to a broker that offers you the best spreads. And, you know, if you've got to pay a commission, you've got to pay a commission. That's just part and parcel of bloody trading, you know, and especially with the method that I teach people, which is to hedge, right? Hedging, I mean, again, is something that is never really touched upon in the retail space. But I mean, it's, it's, it's a case of saying to yourself, hey, look, at no point in my bloody life am I ever going to be uh, completely in control of the foreign exchange market or any market, put it that way. And what you want to do is you want to treat trading like a business and hedge because what you then do in there is, is you're basically saying to the market, look, I'm taking my ego out of everything. I'm not overthinking anything. What I just want to do is, is I want to find out in which direction the market wants to go in. So at certain places, what you're going to see is volatility. Now, volatility is our friend. This is how we make money. Um, institutions are always hedged. So what do we do? We make money on volatility. So we don't care if the market goes up or down. And again, that's, you know, um, within the retail space, it, it's, it's all about very much picking direction, which I think is mm -hmm. kind of stupid because that's very subjective and then you know it all comes down to view the human being and how you view things and you know because you've taken a view um or you've taken picked a side let's say we've screwed up already because you've emotionally you've got an attachment to it already mm -hmm. this is not a good place to be you can't be emotional when you're trading it's just like look market all i want you to do is move direction i don't care and if i don't care about direction and all i care about is movement and volatility that's how you would trade as an institutional trader do you know what i mean so i mean mm -hmm. i teach when i teach people in the states the, for some ridiculous reason i don't know why but how much money got lobbed at congress for about this is unbelievable but they can only trade in one direction right because apparently mitigating risk for a retail trader is risky don't quite know how that works but <laughs> yeah right what can they do well if you're looking at fx you can trade spot but then hedge with options all right so again it's like whichever which way this market moves you're covered do you know what i mean but you want to have sort of you know definitive stop losses and take profit targets and everyone must remember a take profit target is a target you don't always hit them so you've got to be able to sort of you know manage trades um, people often talk to me about risk management. I kind of boil that down as nice and simple. If you're going to risk 1% either side, your total overall risk is 2%. That's it. Job done. Do you know what I mean? It's nice and simple. Um, yeah. I don't like retail education. I did make an admission, and I, I, I don't know why I said it, but I did do it at the time. Obviously, when, you know, look, we, we were doing the speech, you know, the, the presentation mm -hmm. and everything like that, and you then asked me to go and do this sort of what, what did we call it podcast no not the podcast the bit where we're all, oh. I'm on stage with another three guys oh um the panel the panel oh. that was it sorry the panel discussion yeah, yeah, and so yeah. i jump up i jump up there and i was late because i was talking to people outside in the hall and i was late and i just i, I sort of ran up to the stage got throw, a mic thrown at me and then was just like oh so what would you recommend paul and i was like sorry i'll miss the miss the question um and the question was basically something along the lines of is there something you could say right now to these people in this room that would help them in trading and i said yeah stop oh, listening God. these knobs on youtube <laughs> 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 right? which you know again i understand the irony and i said this to alex last time the fact that these things do go up on youtube but it was like you stop listening to these people um this might sound like i'm blowing my own trumpet or being very arrogant but i actually worked there i actually did it as a job so if you've got people that haven't worked in the industry and haven't done it as a job quite frankly you shouldn't really be teaching people but mm -hmm. That's just my opinion, and obviously I'm, you know, entitled to mine, and everybody is entitled to theirs. But it's, yeah, for me, it's kind of, it, it, it's scary because anybody can do it. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think, so I think, at, would, would you know, would you, would you say that? I mean, we kind of touched on it already, but I mean, for me, uh, now, honestly, obviously, I haven't been trading for nearly as long as you have, Paul. But with 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 the social media, uh, do you? Would you say that 
the today's social media world is kind of like destroying the 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 idea of trading for for new new people coming into the space i think it just erodes confidence hugely because you're always going to have those snake oil salesmen out there you know regardless of what bloody generation that you're ever in or do you know mm. what i mean whatever, whatever sort of market you're in or, or anything like that but it's kind of like portraying this hey you know look put a few trades on you know piss off down the beach you come back you make profits happy days blah 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 <laughs> flash cars this watches which is all bullshit it's not like that <laughs> yeah, I, I love I love when you see someone post it, it. You know, they're on the beach with the laptop. They're like, oh, I, I've traded five minutes today, made made five k before breakfast. Now I'm just gonna relax rest of the day. And people don't realize that rest of the day that's that's when the real trading starts. You know, the the that's when the real work starts. You know, so yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. It's uh, gives completely false yeah. uh, expectations. Well, that's the thing. If, if you're giving people false expectations, you're doing them a huge disservice. Do you know what I mean? And it, it, it's trading is a long term thing. Do you know what I mean? It can be a career and it's about cherry picking when you want to trade. It's not like I say, it's not trading for the sake of trading or oh, the market's open. I must be trading. It doesn't work for me like that, especially, you know, if you're if you're in the foreign exchange market and. You know, I've said this to Alex before, but I'll say it to you as, as, as well. You know, if you look at the two aspects of the foreign exchange market, commercial business and speculatory business, speculatory business isn't happening every bloody minute of the day. Commercial business is happening every minute of the day. Um, commercial business is traded by large conglomerates, importers, exporters, you know, things like that. And then you've got to look at that and say, well, these people are trading because they have to trade. Now, they don't care what bloody price they get. They just have to trade. So if you're looking at that and people say, oh, the market's really random, yeah, it is on a you know second by second, minute by minute basis. It is random. But when you get to certain specific places, that's where the randomness comes out of it. That's where the speculation occurs. And then that's where you sit there and say to yourself, right, bloody hell, <clears throat> this is where I want to be trading from. I have to be patient. And I think that's one of the the really bad things about social media and instant news and instant everything these days is people have lost the art of patience, which is oh, what, yeah, for sure. You know, which is what you need. Before, before we go on to obviously the last conversation that we had, we went through a lot of the stuff that we're talking about today. The difference is obviously today we've got a lot more people that have got their own kind of questions that I do want to, that do want to yeah. ask you a question and we've got a good platform yeah, for them to do that. Um, but also, obviously, afterwards, we'll just push it over to you because I know you've got a trading view open for us to kind of see, like, um, technically as well, what you're, what, what we're kind of trying to convey and what, what you normally do. But a couple of these questions, I don't know if uh, a couple of people are asking a bit of liquidity grabs in the market, especially on things like assets like gold. Have you ever heard of do the institutions go after liquidity and try and look for areas of liquidity to get into the positions how does it work uh, work like that well it's all about i mean this is the thing so it's all about liquidity so we want to be able to generate liquidity for ourselves so what we're not going to do is basically teach our clients what we're doing because if you teach your clients what you're actually doing then when you want to buy so do they so you, there's, there's a liquidity dry up so what can happen and what will happen i won't read it out online i will direct people to actually go and have a look at it i won't read it out because i don't want to yeah. sort of get into any you don't guys into trouble. or myself but what i want you to do is i want you to go and read some of the small print right in a, a, in a report that you can get that's available right so i worked at a place called sugden uk go to google Type in Sukden, S U C D E N, Sukden Financial FX Report. <clears throat> then, what I want you to do is, we need to go there, <clears throat> excuse me, click on that report, forget all the bullshit that's at the top, and go to the bottom, right? The little tiny bit that in fine print nobody reads. What does it say within that report, right at the bottom? It says, We send you this report not on the basis for you to trade on our recommendations well a what was the point in sending out the bloody report in the first place if you didn't want to place the seed in people's minds right and but it also says this report here doesn't come 
with any restrictions on dealing ahead. See, there's a bit of a clue as to what's mm -hmm. happening, dealing ahead. So does that mean that I've already bought gold and then I send the report out? Right. So I've already bought gold. So then I send the report out and it says in the report as a recommendation or this is our thoughts and our views. If gold gets to this level, we think that the momentum will take it higher. So we may be looking, I mean, we may be, we may be looking to buy into that strength. So you've planted a seed in somebody's mind that says, oh, right, okay, well, look, I'm not going to look where we are currently. I'm going to look up here. And so when we get there, they go, oh, yeah, remember that report? They reckon that the momentum was going to continue higher. Now, if you get someone like Goldman sending something like that out, right, what happens? People take a lot of notice of it. How do you generate liquidity? You do the opposite of what you say. We do the opposite of what you're telling everybody else to do because you've already bought, they want to buy. So you can sell to them, can't you? You can close your position now. A good, I saw a, I I saw a good example. Sorry about it. Mate. I was just saying, no, saw... got a good example on Bitcoin. If we just look at Bitcoin for the last year, before yep. CTF stuff happened, you had all of these major guys on Twitter, all major news outlets, bashing Bitcoin, saying it was a useless asset, saying that it shouldn't be, it's super risky and people are losing money. All of that time, you've got all of these big firms buying up, buying up Bitcoin. And you can see how much accumulation there was just by looking at the chart. And yeah. now suddenly, everybody and their grandma have just suddenly found out that, you know, there's this ETF and now everybody's buying it and now Bitcoin is all the way, all time, all times high. Now, if you just think about it, you you're, you're, they're going to start selling into all of that liquidity now at the all times high. Now everybody's buying into it. It's just what they're doing. Yeah. So that's but, a good example. Yeah. yeah and uh, you, you look at again as, 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 as Bitcoin, but then go back a, a few years with gold. Right. So every Tom, Dick and Harry out there, every bank, you know, so there's a Goldman, you've got some JP, gold through 2000, it goes to the moon. Right. So what happens? The gold gets up goes through 2000, and then they've already bloody bought it around about, you know, let's say about 1800, 1750, 1800. But it gets there, it goes to the moon. It's a great example. So you, you see, it, it gets there and it gets through 2000 and it goes, bing, bang. Yeah, you've all bought. Thanks very much. You've helped us close out our position. And actually, you know what? We've probably actually got ourselves short now. So now we made money on the way up. Now we're making money on the way down. And then the next time it got back there again, it was gold through 2000. It goes to the moon. That's what you said last time. Definitely going to happen this time. What happened? Bing, bang, straight back down again. And then what happens? Gold through 2000, and obviously we made a new recent high on gold, but gold through 2000, it goes to the moon. Yeah, but you said that the first two times. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely going to happen this time. So you basically say, yes, yeah, so you're basically saying like, you. let's say I'm working at Goldman Sachs. I'm, uh, I have a huge position on, let's say, gold. And yep. uh, I'm not telling anyone about that position, but I'm sending out a report and I'm not recommending people to buy gold, but I'm saying that this would be a good place to buy gold if it does this and that. And then it does that. And I'll be selling my position to everyone who's not taking my financial advice, you know, to buy yep. gold. It's 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 guys like if you're listening to this, like you got to realize that this this industry has, has a lot of. There's a lot of smells smells weird in a lot of places in this industry. You got to be careful, right? That's basically what we're saying here, mm -hmm. right? What 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 is the what are the markets there for? It's not to, the market's there to take money out of one pocket and put it into the other. It's a sharky yeah. business, yeah. and I think it always always has been. But I feel like what, the reason why people ask these now is because I think in the retail industry now you've got things like ICT that teach a lot oh, of liquidity grabs you've got like on smaller time frames where price goes to one area of demand or supply and then you know takes everybody's stops out and then goes the opposite direction so that's why i think people are looking at liquidity in those areas but that could just be just because a lot of people are just having orders you know under the last highs and under the last lows you know so i don't know uh 
Yeah, I mean, well, that's the thing as well. I mean, there's this paranoia in the retail market that institutions are basically plugged into all of these bloody retail brokers and they're going, oh, look, Mr. Smith, you know, Mr. Brown, Mr. Whoever. Oh, look, look at all these positions. Come on, let's take all of those out. Come on. Let's, let's not be stupid. And it, and it doesn't work like it doesn't work like that. Like that. The... Yeah, you're not even on the radar. You know, sorry to be horrible, yeah. but you're not even on the radar. You're not even in our thinking, our thought process. But the other thing is, 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 Think about it. When you place an order in the market, all right, you go, I want to buy here or I want to sell here. Right. You don't tell me where you want to take your profit because you don't set that. But you do tell me where your stop loss is because I need to know that. Yeah. Now, you could give me an order without a stop. Yes, you could. But the majority of professional people will obviously say, no, you know, look, when, a, when the pain gets too much, I need to stop this trade. Right. So they'll give you your stop. So if you know where they all are, now, of course, you're not allowed to gun for them. That wouldn't be very nice. But if natural market forces meant that the market rose and then all of a sudden it triggered through a level and then bum, 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 all your stops went, hmm, yeah. I may. Natural or, market currency talks in the pub are we talking about, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, did, we did see some very, uh, very... Um, very weird moves on gold like i think last year on a on a, one of the one of the bigger bigger brokers and uh, got a, got a big of a got a bit of a situation there and discussion about about that you know so yeah that definitely i mean we we kind of know that those sort of things might be going on you know be behind the scenes allegedly uh, yeah yeah exactly <laughs> i want to i want to ask you have you just just before we move on to the, the questions here that we have in the chat? So SMC, yep. smart money concepts. So there's this big thing right now in on social media where there's this a lot of people are selling a lot of different courses on smart money concepts, saying that this is the way the banks trade, and they have all sorts of different price patterns and indicators that tell people uh, buy this course. This is exactly how the banks trade. Now, I've actually seen some of the stuff you have uh, where you talked about some of the, and we're probably going to go into this when, when when we look at your trading view, uh, but the banks. They don't really, you know, they don't really sell when RSI is no. overbought, do they? <laughs> no, no. no. I, mean, it, I mean, this is the thing, you know, God, I mean, I've been saying the same bloody things for like eight years now. Right. It is not based around indicators. It is not based around fundamentals. It's like, right, okay. Technical analysis was only invented with the, basically with the invention of computing power. And obviously markets didn't bloody open when, you know, Bill Gates pulled his finger out of his ass and give us, you know, Windows 95 or Windows 98, right? That didn't happen. So obviously they go way back. So, I mean, if I was to use the metal exchange as an example, right, opened in the 1870s. Now, think about that. Do you know what I mean? Opened in the 1870s. I remember teaching a guy in Texas, right? And I was like, yeah, the metal exchange opened in 1877. I said, right, just look out your window and picture Texas in 1877. I said, what do you see? And he said, well, first thing, it was still part of Mexico. Uh, and the second thing, there's nothing here. Do you know what I mean? There was literally nothing here. It's the Wild West. I said, yeah, but this opened in 1877. I mean, how on earth do you think those guys traded, made money, and turned it into the world's biggest non-ferrous metals market? It can't have been on Fibonacci levels and it can't have been on RSI and it can't have been on Elliott Waves and it can't have been on any of this technical bullshit that's come out with the advent of, you know, with the you know invention of, like I say, decent computers. So what is all of that stuff there for? I mean, I've touched upon this many a time. I'll just rehash it again. But they're basically there to use to describe previous market moves so that you can tell a story. So an analyst's job is to tell a story. People like listening to stories, right? And they look at all this stuff and it's kind of like, if you're, if, if you're paying me millions of dollars in, in commission a year to trade, right, you want to see a little bit back for your, you know, for your outlay. So, you know, we hire all these analysts and they send all this shit out and, you know, it's just window dressing. It is literally just window dressing bullshit. It's like this big 
fucking merry-go-round of you know and it was great in the in the, in the wolf of wall street with you know matthew mcconaughey it's it's true it is just like a carousel right some people are going to jump on some people are going to jump off but you have to keep this thing going and the whole financial system is about drawing people in right we want to make money from you we know how to make money from you you don't know really how to make money or you might get lucky and you get in a ball run and you buy stock you know if you look at well, we look at japan we look at that in a, in a in a while but you can get lucky right but the majority of the time the house always wins because we set the rules of the game now just talking about this ict and these smart money concepts and all this shit um and we had comments at the bottom of the last video that we did oh this is what ict has been saying for years and blah blah blah, blah. <laughs> all right right okay um i haven't looked into it I don't need to. I wouldn't personally want to waste my time doing it. Now, again, that might sound a bit arrogant, but look, boys, I've been in this you know industry since 1994. I don't need to go and read and you know look at any other things. But it's liquidity grabs. Where are they? Order blocks. Well, can you see them on your chart? No. So it's just I don't know. Yeah. 21st century fucking. Uh, I don't know. 21st yeah, century. Yeah, yeah. I think most 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 of these techniques just come from the main, you know, the main. I I don't know what ICT is too much, but I think a lot of a lot of people trade with just basic support resistance and supply demand, whatever you want to do, and they just, you know, make it into their own their own thing with their own names, their own setups. And I think that's what they what they sell and. If it brings more people into trading, well, that's good for us, and I'm happy with that. One thing I did want to ask was yeah. this: is a couple of questions. What are your insights about the uncertainty between the BRICS countries and the G7 financial systems? Is it affecting the forex market? How is it affecting the forex market? Sorry, mate, you could just cut out a little bit there. Can you repeat that? Yeah. So he's asking with the uncertainty with BRICS and the G and the G7 financial systems. How is that going to affect the financial, the financial system, the, the FX, uh, the foreign exchange markets? I mean, I'd look at that, probably make it a little bit more volatile. Um, you know, but we're in a period at the moment of what I would call sort of fundamental flatness. Um, nothing's really sort of been, I don't know, how do you say it? Sort of nothing sort of kind of been set in stone. You've been looking at you know sort of the top g7 countries all been pretty much following exactly the same path uh, we've had interest rate hikes obviously with the countries have been trying to get inflation under control that seems to be coming down now it seems to be a clamor to right uh, we need to be cutting interest rates you've looked you know wall street's kind of screaming at the fed to cut interest rates but obviously they're two separate entities so the fed doesn't have to do anything there but i just think it's we're kind of brewing at the moment for you know we've had quite a bit of volatility in the last few years it's like i say it's kind of gone a little bit flat at the moment everybody's eyeing up the fed and they're like right uh, as soon as they do something we'll do the same you've got a complete opposite of opinion in japan um i mean for me i think the japanese have played a blinder at the moment if i'm perfectly honest uh they've how you know steadfast in in their sort of monetary policy they've let the yen get weaker they have you know helped japanese companies sort of generate huge profits um you know they're selling things like it's going out of fashion and you know they're sort of sitting there and just like well look this is good for japanese companies if you look at the you know if you look at the nikkei at the moment you know it's making new highs you know you've got to look at it and just say again we need volatility in markets in order to make money we need well put it this way america, i mean america hasn't had a war for the last three presidents i mean jesus they're definitely due one and you know war is good for industry it's good for starting. yeah <laughs> you know what i mean so it's, it's it's good for it's good for markets um i mean i think you could sit yeah. there and overanalyze everything to the nth degree but then again you know if you kind of take yourself out of it and and say to yourself Right, if I overanalyze everything, I'm overthinking everything. If I just kind of sit there and say to myself, right, again, patient, wait for levels. When you get there, hedge, 
market goes up market goes down i don't give a shit which direction it goes in i could sit there and write a full bloody massive report but then that's just my opinion and quite frankly who gives a shit about my opinion do you know what i mean mm -hmm. is, is you've got people talking about central bank uh digital currencies is that going to change the foreign exchange market no currencies still need to be exchanged and if you really think about it money's electronic anyway do you know what i mean it, it makes no bloody difference really you know the amount of cash in the world in comparison to the amount of you know electronic money is minuscule so i mean i would look at it and just say things will continue business continuity doesn't matter what happens around the planet because you know if you go back and look at charts that go back you know maybe 50 years or something like that think of all the things that have happened between then and now and then think about it and say you know has the value of money changed physical money yes but then if you look at a market and again we'll talk about japan let's look at the yen so if i'm going back to the late 80s very early 90s and then i look now and we're at the same price levels i want you to really think about right the value of money back in the very late 80s to the 90s to the value of money now real physical money that people have an emotional attachment to right it's totally different mm -hmm. so how can the value of the yen be the same now as it was back in the late 80s early 90s See that on face value that doesn't make sense but then if you turn around and said mm, this is actually just one big giant game and we don't really care where the yen is relative to the dollar all we want to do is trade it and make profit and again you could look at that from a you know an economical standpoint and you could write lots of papers and again it's all overthinking for me i like to keep things really really simple but to just sort of sit there and say well how can the market be reacting to the same places right now as it was 30 years ago 35 years ago 40 years ago how can a market do that because surely things have changed mm, they might have changed from the you know from the outset of the story from the outside but on the inside, it's just like no we're just using the same prices within which to trade and all we're going to do is just keep continuing to do the same thing year after year after year after year and that is basically you know sort of some of the rules of the game you just got to understand it doesn't matter what generation of trader you are whether you're 80s 90s 2000s 2010s 2020s the rules of the game don't change and if they did and if they were constantly changing like fundamental situations it would be impossible to teach a younger person how to trade because you wouldn't kind of sit down walk into a bank and go right there you go alex sit down mate here's a 10 million dollar account it's all based around technicals pal go and figure it out for yourself wouldn't happen right or you walk in and they go right fundamentals it's all about fundamentals sit down there you go 10 million dollar account go and figure it out for yourself oh by the way every single fundamental event is completely different and it's a separate thing but you know good luck or would yeah. you sit down with somebody and go right these are the rules of the game this is where we've been trading from for decades you may or may not get to trade these levels it depends where the market goes but if i could then sort of have like this framework right and this kind of roadmap and go right there you go you take that you'll be trading these levels so i mean if you think about it so if we're here on the yen then and now you've got traders right in the 90s the 2000s the 2010s that have never seen these prices never traded them but then we get to the 2020s and then what's happening well, we're reacting from the same places so could it just possibly be that like in any business on the planet business continuity is you teach the younger generation how things work and all they do is, is they just carry it through mm -hmm. so very long -winded that's, what, that, that's that's what you basically they do in the, in the institutions that you work they took levels and they took you know techniques and they just passed it on to you guys and you've just yeah, done the same thing and that's what goes on well it's like any walk of then, business, any business isn't it yeah do you know what i mean it's like any business if you looked at you know if you look at like a bricklayer or something like that you go and learn how to you know build a wall i mean that fundamentally hasn't changed for thousands of years and it's just business continuity it just keeps going and going and going and going because it's a case of if it ain't broke don't fix it mm -hmm. 
So I think I think people <clears throat> people will want to uh, maybe see some examples of uh, what we're talking about here. So yeah. you know, if 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 the banks are not using RSI Fib levels, then what are they doing in terms of technical analysis? Are there any like I, I have my ideas, you know, with the fundamentals of of, of TA, keeping it simple. But I think you're the right person to to go through that. Okay, so let's have a flick over to here. Then hopefully this is going to work. Does that work? Can you see yeah, that? Uh, yeah, we got we got the Nick eye on at the moment on a I, month feature. Have a look through it. See the mouse moving and all that malarkey. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I just zoomed out. By the way, it's insane. It's broken above the 1989 highs. So it's really reclaimed all time highs here. Yes, it has. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I've ever ever looked at ever looked at that chart before in my life okay that's crazy right so if we looked at it here so what am i basically doing when i'm looking at prices right so there's certain things that i look for on a chart and i'm just looking for it's just pure price and the reaction to price now again this is what I, when i teach people i say you know we're, we're acutely aware that this thing down the bottom it's called time it passes it doesn't exist in trading it's, you know it doesn't exist at all what does exist is price and value of particular prices so if i'm looking here and i go wow look the nikkei is making new highs uh, i need something to compare that to so if i was to go back over here right so if i was looking at this nikkei here my starting point would be where are we in 89 90. so i go right to the top and i go okay let me mark that level and then i come over here and i go aha uh -huh. so this candle here is what i would say to you is a conscious decision a conscious decision by the market to change this value so if i was to say to you that this value here was expensive why well the market got here stopped and then retreated all right so i would say that was overvalued here all right so it's expensive now a conscious decision has been made here to make this break that particular price there close above it which then tells me why it's now got more impetus to, to to move up now if i then drop that down to a week right now what can i see so now i see the market coming up breaking closing above now what's it done it's basically it's come back to check but hey guys we still you know cheap here we're still sticking you know evaluation of cheap here yes we are okay bang up so i've got the same thing mm -hmm. that happens if i go back again in the past right so then i go back here and i go okay well look back in again in november of 89 that was a previous high yeah that's his all that was its previous all-time high but that was its previous high there and i go hmm okay so what happens if i put a level there and then if i go back to the week uh, i gotta scroll back a bit all right and then i look here and i go right up reject close above up sorry so this is i mean this is just it's so simple that's the thing that's the thing that annoys a lot of people it is so 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 simple let's just get over so it's, here it's just level level to level like everybody has you know said you got level to level you mark out the levels and especially on the higher time frames and whatever that level actually whatever the price does on that level is what you the trade that you take but you use a hedging kind of yeah, technique always, yeah, always, yeah, always do you know what i mean always hedge right so you've got to sit down you're going to do that you've got to sit down and say okay so you know you know generally if we break a level how far past do we go past it right before we turn around because then i can sort of sit there and go right okay so that's sort of how i want to be sort of setting up my stops um take profits would i always go from level to level no not necessarily again that's about trade management oh, i don't probably for around about halfway because then again if i look here right at this halfway point and just whack that in there very quickly if i look at this halfway point what can i excuse me what can i see i can see the markets reacting to this so could this very well be the thing that we talked about earlier where mm -hmm. i've traded here i send the report out it gets to here client starts to buy mm, 
ultimately it comes back again and then we have the same run out and we have the same run out and then at some point it will take this price out and basically go above it so if i look at that it's it's the most simple thing on the planet right it's so 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 simple so that's that's the nikkei right so if i then went and said right because we spoke about it before so the dollar yen right and again let's go to a month let's go back and have a look at the same time period oh, Paul's, i think um... he pressed the wrong wrong window i've, do I've done that as yeah. well you know you press instead of pressing the screen you press your your camera see if you can get back i took a shot on gold really no way did you did you yeah quite a bit heavy though um yeah probably gonna close it <laughs> man you <laughs> we just talked about gold how you're not supposed to touch it you're like oh, i'm not gonna touch gold i'm not scalp. touching it Sca oh. do you know what if i look if you looked at my screen you re realize why you would have touched it why you would have touched it see that, was, all see right. obviously that dude i really want I, I, as well I, I, it's even on the Oh, maybe Look maybe we that. can add him. We we double, we, we, we should probably we, we need to oh, add him. He's back. He's back. Hey, that's it. There we go. Welcome back, man. Back. Again, this bloody computer is driving me crazy. Right, but then let's have a little look then. Right, and say uh, there. So let's go back and go. So this blue line here kind of represents where we were on the Nikkei when it made its all-time, or well, its previous all-time high, I should say. All right. So that's here. So that's December of 1989. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I say, okay, well, the stock market was going up and up and up and the yen got weaker. And then I say, okay, so where did the yen get to? Up here, around about 160. All right, and then if I said, okay, so roughly there, roughly here, roughly here, right, okay. So what I'm then looking at is I'm saying, right, so this is all the way back in the 80s and into the 90s, right? So market is doing certain things from certain places. I then go, right, well, okay, let's have a little look there so i go right so that's august of 1990 what's the high uh 15160. Mm, the next time i got here right which was this particular level so we're looking at this one here what did the market do now bearing in mind this is october 2022 so this is 32 years later what was the high 151 called it 95. How on earth is the value of the yen the same now as it was all the way back in 1989? It doesn't make sense at face value. Mm -hmm. Unless you said it was just a one giant big game and all we've been doing is just been doing the same things over and over and over and over again. Right? Mm -hmm. Which is just letting things play out. Now, if I was to say, if I looked at the Nikkei and said, right, now the Nikkei is making new highs and then I could say, right, well, the Bank of Japan quite happy at the moment for the yen to be fairly weak it's got potential to reach up to that 160 level it's got potential but would they let the yen get that weak most probably not but what they're waiting for is basically the fed to make the first move so they don't have to actually do anything um you know and if it if, if it means that they change their monetary policy stance and it makes the yen a little bit stronger then so be it but all that's happening is is market these markets are split up into ranges all right so roughly yeah and then and with your with with institutional level kind of like training when you first get into the office and they start you know the breaking everything down of how they like to trade is level levels of support and resistance one of the main fundamental things that they teach you to find first or is well, yeah. it something else that they make you look at well it basically so i mean look i mean if i looked at that all right and i got in and i said to myself all right so what's this market doing well it's just ranging between these levels that's all it's doing it's not doing anything you know spectacular or anything like that that was uh, i don't know any bloody move this thing right there we go so if i'm just looking here all i'm going to do is i'm just going to play these ranges 
Mm -hmm. right so then you know when you sort of first start out learning it's like right well i'm going to look at the chart and i'm going to look for specific things and you're taught what to look for so i mean if i was to sort of sit there and and, and say right break close above pull back bang but it's all about value and previous value and mm -hmm. current values so if the previous value was expensive all the way back there you know like i said in the in the in late 80s early 90s and i get there and i see this bang same reaction mm -hmm. go, right okay well that's interesting let's have a little look here you know across here so when i crow when i broke and closed above it what happened well i came back and bang same reaction mm -hmm. then i broke and closed below okay so now what am i looking for a reversal away from there basically you know i might not always get one but then again if i break and close back above again i'm again i'm looking for another move away from this level up to the top of this range break close below close below here changes value comes down hits the bottom of the range bounces back up again reverses when it gets to the top on some profit taking basically breaks and closes above it again goes all the way up here again at some point you know it's either going to break close and go up here or it's going to come back down here again and it's it's so 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 simple it's ridiculous but i mean again that's right let's see is is he is he gone again wait yeah oh, no, device he's, not he's connected in. probably gonna get back yep yeah, yeah, there he is back back again sorry guys so i'm gonna throw this thing out Yo, I, I had a i had a quick quick uh, question so uh right now you're you're adding adding the levels on the on the higher time frames you're looking at the monthly and the weekly but i've also seen that you've uh, gone down to the uh, to the daily so yeah. um are you um, are you uh, obviously you're doing a top-down analysis but is there a limit to how far down you'll go i know you're probably not going to look at one minute right oh no i mean i'm looking at so the reason i'm, I'm doing that is basically to say look this is this is where I derive my levels from. So it's going to be on a monthly chart always because a monthly, you know, the, the end of the month close is very, very important for me. Um, come down to just a week just to sort of show you kind of what that looks like. Come down to a day so that you can get a little bit of a clearer picture of how that kind of tracks. But I don't trade from a time frame. That I really must stress that. It's not about time frame. It's about a price. Not a time frame. So time does not exist right so if i was to say to you i mean again if you just keep going look at anything um bu, 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 bu. right boys bitcoin. pick pick me a stop bitcoin, bitcoin, bitcoin. <laughs> i was gonna say uh you know we're all we're all long to our long to our knees in bitcoin and right you know we're all we're all uh degenerate uh speculative gamblers here um, well you well you you uh, definitely are with the i'm talking about myself definitely oh, with yeah, all yeah. the old coins and stuff like that there's probably not a lot of history that you could get with this but um, probably not too could, much and again I'd, I'd i'd look at a month those monthly mo those monthly levels if you see that last week that massive crash we had in 2021 hit that the the all-time high of 2018 and then yeah you've seen the reversal so that's where i can see bitcoin is quite technical when it comes to these big macro levels which is basically what i, I that the things that you're you're talking about now with how um yeah so i mean that we've got one two three four five six seven levels i'd look at on bitcoin and i wouldn't bother with anything else but then i put that on a week and i go right well so that is a beautifully clear picture and it uh, do you know what i mean i've been doing it uh, it took me seconds to do but that's a beautifully clear picture i look at that and i go right where do i want to trade from all time high i mean that's like a given but again oh, you hear you you guys you hear yourself buy bitcoin that's it that's oh, i didn't that's say it, that <laughs> <laughs> yes he said he said buy into his liquidity he's got his order he's got his sell orders right up there, guys. <laughs> but no that's that's the thing so i mean look at look at the ride from here to here and then up to there and then look at the ride from here to here and up to here but no you're right you know if everybody out there is going to do the same thing which is basically be buying Bitcoin, it will go mm. and make new highs. What I want you to notice as well, though, boys, look. Look at the distance between these levels. Yeah. 
they're very consistent mm -hmm. right very consistent in their makeup so we could be really really stupid couldn't we and i'm not saying that this is where bitcoin's going at all this is not financial advice at all i've never traded bitcoin in my life and quite frankly i never will um but i mean if it's going to be consistent with the distance between its level so basically how it's cycling basically is how i would describe it then if you break here you've got potential to somewhere kind of up here see now if i was an institutional trader and i sat there and i had a nice long position what would entice even more people to come in to the bitcoin market breaking an all-time high yeah, yeah. breaking yeah. an all-time high and it's like everybody's good oh my god look at this it's all over the media it's all over social it's all over this it's all over that it's going to the moon that's when Goldman Sachs goes up with their not financial advice to buy Bitcoin, correct? Of course. Yeah. Of course. But yeah, then we see, we, yeah, we see it every like every, every time, every cycle. I've been in, in 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 most of the Bitcoin cycles, and every time we see, you know, we see the banks come out and say like, "Your Bitcoin is dead," right? At the bottom, Bitcoin is dead. At the top, Bitcoin is more alive than than ever. You know. Yeah. We'll <laughs> see. Time. All right. Yeah. So, so then you got gold right then you've got gold right so you come over here and you go okay let's have a look at this i mean so this is for want of a you know for want of a few bucks right so then let's let's whack on two there's you go there's a price of two thousand right so what's going on here well if i was an institution i would have been buying some roughly round about here why would i be buying roughly round about here well if i go back over here to the you know financial crisis yes we're above then we're below bang reject bang reject bang reject bang reject get here again bang reject then i know right the break and close above through here basically psh, market goes up all right it's got free scope to do that and obviously look we know what was going on in 2020 right so what happens so the market breaks and closes above here it's up and then you get to 2000 and what comes out of the institutions gold through 2000 it goes to the moon i bought here you're buying here i'm selling bang there you go right this is what we were talking about earlier gold through 2000 it goes to the moon again what well, really yep boom down breaks and closes it does it again right and then goes all the way up here makes a new high and we've you know we're very sort of close here again so that that previous all-time high but you look at that and it's just go back and have a look at the reports. Do you know what I mean? Go and have a look at the reports that were out and available at the time. What were they saying? They are not, they're not telling you what they're doing. Yeah. Right, so, uh, they're doing the I'm opposite. Interested in, yeah. 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 It's, it's pretty, and then, you know, obviously I haven't looked at the reports myself, but it's, it's, I've seen it happen a lot of times. Like there is, FUD does exist, you know, and, 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 uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, when it comes to like adding, adding the levels, that's, you know, that's, I mean, obviously you're, 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 you're adding levels, just at price levels, very simple. You have a, you know, obvious place where price comes into resistance. That's a level and then support, same thing. What about trends though? I mean, what about looking at primary, you know, the idea of looking at primary trends and secondary trends? Is that something of interest or is it only price levels? Just price or levels. We... Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, it's just that people say the trends you threatened. I say that's bollocks because you only like it because it rhymes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because yeah. a trend can stuff and reverse at any bloody particular point that it wants to. And when will but, it... But, yeah, yeah when will it do it i mean yeah look markets can continue they can go up and up and up like bitcoin at the minute up and up and up and up and up and you go oh it's in an uptrend yeah, great. Highs right now. yeah great description it's in an uptrend brilliant it's a great description but that can chop and change at any time so mm -hmm. I, I said to people go and do it yourself but sod it let's do it here right okay <laughs> so, love you sudden <laughs> give me some very very good times love you loads but let's have a little look what this says in this report 
This is a marketing communication. Forecasts are not a reliable indicator of future performance. The information in this report is provided solely for information purposes and should not be regarded as a recommendation to buy or sell or otherwise dealing any particular investment. Why are you sending it out in the first place then? What's the point? Please be aware where any views have been expressed in this report, the author of this report may have had many varied views over the past 12 months, including... Oh, I love that one. <laughs> right? A large number of views are being generated at all times, and these may change quickly. Any valuations or underlying assumptions made of solely based upon the author's market knowledge and experience. Please contact the author should you require a copy of any previous reports for comparative purposes so you can check how many times he or she changed their mind over the past 12 months. Furthermore, all the information in this report has not been prepared in accordance with legal requirements designed to promote the independence of investment research. All information in this report is obtained from sources believed to be reliable and we make no representations as to its completeness or accuracy. So basically, it could be bullshit, but mm, we don't know. This report is not subject to any prohibition on dealing ahead, which means I can deal ahead and then send the report out, right, ahead of the dissemination of investment research. Accordingly, the information may have been acted upon by us for our own purposes. So basically, they're pumping their own bags. Is is what they're 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 saying here? They're opening up to say like, this is not financial advice. We might give you you know different uh, opinions on this during during the year, and we we may or may not hold what we're recommending to buy or sell here, right? Yeah. So we might have already traded ahead, and then we send you the report out, and then we plant the seed in your mind, and then you go, oh yeah, I remember that. This is what they yeah. said. You know, I'm, 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 I'm interested to hear you. Uh, you talk about hedging, right? So, yeah. when I, th I think, I think what people are would be interested in is how. Now, in, in theory, this this all makes sense. You add the levels, and you look at you look at these levels, and then if price, you know, is trading above a level, that would be you know a good place to be buying to the next level. Uh, if if I'm not you know mistaken now how and in theory this is this this is simple but we all know in practice trading is is way more difficult than 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 what it is in theory so when when you're looking at hedging how do you actually when let's say price hits a level yep. it, it closes a a weekly candle above that level now how do you prepare to actually make money on on this move? I'd set my trades up in advance. So that's the thing. So when you, when you mark out all of your levels, then what you do is, is you put your orders in ahead of the time, right? I mean, again, knowing within, especially within the foreign exchange market, your orders can be executed at any time. Mm. So with a hedging technique, again, I, I, since I last spoke to you, I worked with this absolute bloody genius um, that's created an algorithm for me, right? And also mm. created an algorithm that, 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 that basically will go through and say, right this is your optimized take profit this is your optimized stop loss level so if you already know that <clears throat> then what you do in advance <clears throat> excuse me is i would load my order up i wouldn't be scared to do it because i'd have to look at that level and say right well the market is going to do what it's either going to go up or it's going to go down you know again do i care in which direction that actually goes in no i don't um does it make any difference to me on a personal basis if it goes up or, or down doesn't make any bloody difference whatsoever yeah whatsoever yeah. um if i do that and i hedge i take my ego completely out of the game i don't want to be trading in one direction i don't you know, I I like the idea of i, I like the idea of hedging uh, hedging your position and uh, it's something you know it's something i've been looking into a lot now it doesn't really fit well with the way i'm trading today but i like the idea of you know opening a position and then just waiting for a move you know and, and it doesn't really matter in what direction that move comes if you're hedge you you, you you're going to make money on that that move i think that is a uh it's a beautiful way of trading and it's a beautiful way of like you said removing the ego because it doesn't really matter what the direction of the move is you'll you'll be able to make some money on that anyway yeah so it's, 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 it's about taking your yeah yeah right bro 
dude, what the fuck? I looked at that move and I'm like, I, I, I'm getting alerts and I'm like, we were long. Back again. Well, we were long until we were. Welcome back. Welcome back, Welcome back man. Back. Actually, I'm going to throw this computer out the window in a minute. No, man, you can. Uh, I'm, I'm sure your, your kids are going to have a fun time gaming on it, but maybe you shouldn't be <laughs> trading on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so yeah, so what one 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 thing I wanted to ask you is we've talked about TA, but I when you've when you when you're adding your levels, I also I also see you 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 take the macro into account, right? Do you what 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 is the the news aspect of this? Do you trade the news? Do you care about the macro? Like what's what's I mean, still yeah, yeah, I mean you could look at that and then say, Oh god, there's lots and lots of news, everything's going on. Do I trade? Do I not trade? Again, think about it teams of analysts at banks, some of them paint bullshit stories to send out to clients and others sit there and crunch numbers. So mm -hmm. if you can, again, pretty much forecast what things, uh, you know, what numbers are going to come out, say NFP or something like that, right? So it comes out and they're like, look, if it comes out within a 50, you know, 50K ball, ballpark figure here, either, either side, well, that's not really going to affect the current value at the moment because we've already factored that in. So if you could... If you could reach a zen-like state where you said, you know what, fuck the news. I'm just going to trade, right? News can create volatility. Volatility is our friend, right? So if news can make market volatile, I don't care what bloody news it is. If it gives me an opportunity to make money, then excellent. Other people might be slightly more cautious and say, hey, I don't want to trade around these news events. I don't want to open fresh positions around these news events. Again, you know, I'd say to people, you know, look, in the beginning, you probably don't want to trade around these news events because you might get slightly nervous. But if you could mm. get to a point where you just understood that most of the information that is out there is already included in the current valuation by the people that set the valuations, i.e. institutions, then it doesn't, news doesn't really, really matter. The only time that we will do something to reevaluate very quickly would be an unexpected event so if i were to say brexit in the uk if you remember brexit in the uk back in 2016 it was priced yeah, in yeah. the institutions that there was no one on this earth that the british public were going to vote to leave the european union what happened we voted to leave the european union so they were long and wrong yeah right they were long and wrong they had to get out of that position but what take that loss right take that loss get short knowing that the value of the pound was then going to come down and again do you know what i mean that you, you can sort of trade your way out of that situation but if something major comes along then yeah you know you're going to have this revaluation but most of the time with the news it doesn't really have that much of a factor and again you could really you could analyze everything to the nth degree but i do a personal on a personal basis i just think you're wasting your bloody time do you know what i mean you've got to trade what's in front of you you know, mm -hmm. because if you if you're forming all of these opinions within your own mind, again that can lead you to trade in just one direction. I know, like Sam, I just keep repeating myself, but it's you know what I mean. You're bringing your ego into it, and I want to take my ego out of it because I am in control of the market. Yeah, and I mean, you could you could easily, I mean, if if you if you have a way of of trading, you can easily test it to see how how news uh, and and the macro events is affecting your trading. And usually, the way I see it is, you know, price. Price comes down, hits that high time frame support level. News comes out, it 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 bounces or it moves to the downside either way. And in your situation, I mean, if you're hedged, then you know any any type of volatility, you know, bring it on. It's it's probably going to be, you know, you're going to make money on that volatility anyway. Yeah, I think that's that's the beauty of that's the beauty of hedging. Yeah, but that's how you make money volatility. Sorry, Alex, go on. Yeah, Paul, if you were going to teach your children now how to trade, what would be the first fundamental things that you would uh, that you would get them to, to do? Well, here's your algorithm, kids. Here's your money. <laughs> get, get the fuck alone. Make money. Just leave it alone. We, we did this back. We did a, this back test with the algo set levels, set take profit targets, uh, set stop losses. Uh, we went back to 1st of January of 2008 uh played it out until the middle of august last year when bless him he emigrated moved to the states got a house got married did all of that kind of stuff so i had to wait it's kind of landed with me um back end of last month 
But then if you looked at it, if you'd have started with a 10 grand investment on the 1st of Jan of 2008 and just basically just, just let this thing play itself out, not touch it, no influence over it whatsoever, uh, it turned 10 grand into 768,000 over a period of 15 and a half years with no manual intervention whatsoever. So you wouldn't teach them how to TA, nothing like that? No, wouldn't bother. What's the fucking point? Yeah. <laughs> so that's literally what I'm fucking doing. It's just, there it is. I've, you know, I've done it all for you, kids. Just sort of, you know. Right, so what, what's, what's your favorite F, uh, F1 team? Favorite F1 team? I think you probably kind of guessed. Yeah. <laughs> you lost Hamilton, though. <laughs> yeah. That was inevitable. He was always going to go to Ferrari at some point yeah fair enough we've got a yeah, couple man. more questions and then we're gonna we're gonna let paul go because we're gonna do the giveaway as well for you guys uh okay. in a minute. So if, before we move on though, i want to i want to ask you a question here on on, on ta is that do i mean there are obviously people out there who are profitable you know we 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 got people trading for us here at the fivers who are trading with a with a ta system so there, I mean, there are people out there profitable with with a you know systematic way of of trading TA. But I think what you're more referring to here is like fake education, right? Mm. Like, or, or or would you say that all TA is bullshit? I would say if you're an analyst, that's your job. Yeah. So if you're a trader, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, yeah, it's bollocks. Right. I mean, this is the thing. So if you ever, you know, you watch Bloomberg TV or something like that, and they go, right, we're going down to the new change and life on the floor, there's a fucking analyst because the traders like piss off a lot of job to do. Mm. Yeah. You know, that, that makes sense. I mean, there's a difference between uh, being an analyst and a trader. Absolutely. 100%. It's yeah. just two different worlds. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So Alex, before, you had, you had... I was just going to say, before we get into this last couple of questions, can I just tell you the funniest story of my... Trade. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go, I want to hear some of these old stories because you made me laugh with some of these stories from the pub and stuff. Yeah, right. So just imagine it's the early 2000s. Um, Chinese companies are starting to do a lot more business on the London Metal Exchange. And we thought it would be a good idea to have a native Chinese speaker that could work in the office and obviously, you know, converse and communicate with the Chinese clients a heck of a lot easier than the English guys, right? So a lady joined us called Kathy. This is when I was at Sugden, right? A lady joined us called Kathy. Uh, yeah, and she'd been there a couple of weeks. Right, now what I want you to picture is, okay, so you had the LME desk at Sugden, okay? Some of the guys stayed up in the office and then loads of us actually physically traveled from the office to the trading floor in Leadnall Street in London, right? 52 Leadnall Street. And we would have lines of communication. So you'd have a guy sitting upstairs, any business that the, the, uh, the client facing people upstairs had to do, they'd shout to this kid here, who would then send those orders down to another kid on the trading floor who would then give those to the traders, right? So kind of like in, in real time. So in what we call the pre-market, so that's before we go down to the trading floor, Kathy's come over and she had some buying in the lead market, right? So scale down buying in the lead market. So just really this thing, right? So she had 500 to buy at 2000, 500 to buy at 1950, 500 to buy at 1900, 500 to buy at 1850, and 500 to buy at 1800, right? So this is 500 lots times that by 25, and you get the amount of tonnage, right? Tons. Wow. It's been a boring day. Nothing is happening whatsoever, right? It's a complete snore fest. And then we get to the end of the day, right? and to the place where it's called the curve, which is basically when all metals are all traded at the same time. And all of a sudden, and this is what I mean, so sometimes be really quiet and then you have to turn it on, your brain starts to switch on. It kicks off and it's really, really loud. And she clicked in to this order phone upstairs in the office, right? The kid at the other end of the phone on the trading floor, she's like, I can't remember his real name, but she goes, Scooter. He's like, yeah? She goes, my red orders. 
You what? My red orders. <laughs> you what? My red orders. Do you mean lead? Yes. <laughs> My red orders. If you can't buy it, you can sell it. He goes, okay, drops the phone, goes running down to the lead trader, big fella, jumped up on his back, and he goes, cancel the lead buying, sell it. He goes, okay. So anyway, he jumps down, he runs back. Our trader's like, lead, 95 I'll give, 500. The bloke's like, uh, no, I'll take 20. 95 I sell, 93 I sell, 90 I sell. Boom, 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 boom. He goes, right, you sold 500, I'll give you an average price in a minute. So he's picked the phone up again to Kathy. He goes, right, you sold 500. And she's like, no, 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 you can sell it. In the meantime, he's like, you sold another 500. No, you can sell it. He goes, we are fucking selling it. Right? <laughs> you sold another 500. Right? And she's like, no, no, no. And he's, at this point, right, another guy up in the office, Rob Montefusco, is still there, bless him, as far as I know. He's heard what's going on. He drops his phones in the office, goes running over, grabs the phone out of her ear, right? And he goes, <laughs> she means cancel it. And you just go, fuck. <laughs> he goes running down the front, jumps off on the back again, he goes, buy two and a half thousand lead at market. And he's turned around and went, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> if you can't... Oh, man. If you can't buy it, you can sell it. Yeah, cancel it. <laughs> God, that was yeah, hilarious. Oh, it's beautiful. Pandemonium. Talking about the, you know, myth, communication breakdown. It's beautiful. Yeah. Trading yeah. is uh, way, uh, way whoever, whoever is the, there was a smart person to bring in somebody that could only speak really uh, Chinese and not being able to uh, speak English properly. There you go. What do you expect? It was, it, it, well, it was funny, you know what I mean? And we had, because obviously everything is taped, right, on a trading floor and up in the office, everything is taped, right? So, like, the kid was, like, pleading his innocence. He's like, she told me to sell it. She told me to sell it. So we're like, fuck it, we're going to listen back. And that was just, it was comedy gold, just listening back to the conversation. You can't buy it, you can sell it. Not cancel it, you can sell it. Yeah. I, I, I wish we had that recording. That would yeah. Be, that would yeah. be hilarious. Oh, it was brilliant. Absolutely trading, brilliant. Sorry. Trading is way way more easier today. Way more easier today. <laughs> with the with the with the internet. Holy shit. Yeah. That is, is funny. Probably not. Has anybody got any last questions for Paul before <laughs> we let him go? And then we can uh we can start uh the giveaway for you guys that have been waiting. And uh we'll get you on again, Paul. We can talk uh a little bit more about some of the stories because I think uh, everybody had a good crack. We needed that on a Monday, uh, on a Monday evening, you know. On, yeah. on the Monday evening, yeah, it's Tuesday, dude. It's Tuesday, of course. It's it fucking is. Tuesday, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. You definitely, you definitely needed that. <laughs> oh, definitely needed that one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Paul, thank you a lot for joining. It was it was great and uh, very very insightful and uh, yeah. Thank where you, can where can people find you, Paul? Obviously, all the links for for Paul's details will be in the, the description as uh, always. But for people that want to just find you, LinkedIn stuff like that, where can they find you, Paul? Um, PaulScottFX.com website. Yep. And how much yep. how much for your algo? People are asking. Ah. <laughs> 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 how much for the algo? Um, I don't. I'm not going to put prices on things on here, boys. Because yeah. you know, yeah, fair play. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you very it's much, not, Paul. And we'll speak again, mate. Yeah, it's not just an algo. Right. You understand why, how? Do you know what I mean? That's my own personal standpoint. Otherwise, it's so Paul PaulScottFX.com, correct? And then on LinkedIn, if you just type in Paul Scott FX, you might find me. I don't know. I don't do social media. I yeah. don't do anything like that. You know. Now you're on LinkedIn. I got I got your tab open here on LinkedIn, yeah. so you're definitely there. For, uh, may, well, hopefully, I'm not watching the the wrong person though. But I think it's you. No, it's, yeah, it's, it's you. the first person that will come up. Thank you very much, yep. Paul, and we'll speak again. No worries. Listen, thanks very much for having us on. Um, thanks for listening, and um, yeah, Good look luck. forward to it next time. Cheers, mate. Well, Bye, fellas. Yeah. Take care.
That was Paul Scott, guys. Wow, what All right, that was, that, was that, was that was great. That was great. That yeah, was great man, to get some. Story. I need, I needed, I oh, needed yeah, that sure. after seeing my uh, my trade on uh, Euro. You know, man, you know. EU that 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 that, that you dude. remember how we talked about? We looked like we looked at we talked about you know uh, the the four hour and we're like look at. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, I'm just going to share, share my screen here. Look, look at this level right here. We said like the four mm -hmm. hour, we, we mm -hmm. had that wick mm -hmm. right there, another wick right there. And then we got that move down to the weekly open. We said, you know, I said, maybe we're going to see that move down to the weekly open. Well, we got that move down to the weekly open. Now, what happened is, and this is, this is so frustrating, the, man, the because came out. yeah, definitely. But, but again, you know, the swing trader in me is like, uh, I've taken three trades today and EU from a swing trading perspective is a beautiful level right there. It's a beautiful, beautiful, oh, beautiful level it? right there. Yeah. Um, keep saying set and forget. Yeah, that? definitely. Definitely. But, but it's, it, Lost you know, seven, um, seven, 700, 700 bucks trading today. Um, I should do the. I should get the payout. I think CCC seven seven seven, sir. You have to go in, click on the link, click on 250 k boot camp, and then go through the process, uh, the checkout process. That's that's what you have to do to to get it. Okay, and yeah, let me get the the everything sorted out for the giveaway. That was a funny story, man. Imagine that. I see. That's I, I was born in the wrong e era, man. Definitely, dude. Yeah, dude. Imagine, imagine, like on the trading floors, imagine man. That. I would have so much fun. The thing is, I would, I would be having way too much fun. I would not be alive yeah, today true. if I would. If I were alive at that time, I would not be alive today. I would just be that's fucking it. all yeah, in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Wolf of Wall Street kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm good, glad we've got, some, I'd, I'd... We've got Gary Langley coming on tomorrow as well. So hopefully, let's hope he. Uh, I really hope so because I, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using a lot of his stuff in in my trading with the with the levels, and uh, I, I need, I need him to get on and uh, explain it to me again because honestly, last time we we didn't give him the enough uh, attention, I believe that he deserved. Nope. So I want to get him on, and I want to I ask him some uh, some questions, you know, about his trading. What is Bitcoin doing? So, well, Bitcoin is the have high not, is what? Well, oh, we, 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 we got we got rejected at six. Right. We actually got rejected at all time high. So the high in 2021 is 69,000. The high of today is 69,000. So we actually got rejected at, um, yeah. So we got rejected at all time high. Yep. What should the secret word be? Should we just go vanilla today? Vanilla? That's... What we're trying to... But not the actual word vanilla. Why not? Yeah, why not? Be... Well, we already said it, so we're going to be spamming vanilla in the chat anyway. All right, so now now that we had Paul on, um, I got to rethink everything. Uh, yeah, but there's you know there's more uh, uh, many ways to to skin a cat, you know, and I think that what that those ways work, but I haven't got time to wait on a daily chart <laughs> or a weekly chart. It's just yeah. not happening. I have to, you know, I'm a day, I'm a day trader, and I'm going to stick to this. Well, what I mean, what will we be doing in the these these live live streams? You know, she's going to launch a weekly chart. Nah. Oh God, man! What would we actually talk about? Like, we'd actually have to talk to each other. You know, like it would be yeah, tough. Exactly, it'd be a tough, tough gig, man. Yeah, um, man. But It'd be you a, know, set a and podcast. forget. I swear, Set and forget is is a, is the thing. We should uh, we should really stick with set and forget. But I think that's uh, well. That's what I've done today, though. I've I've not been I've not been successful today. But it's uh, you know it is what it is. We'll we'll just uh, 
There is the word, boys and girls. You wanted vanilla, you got chocolate. <laughs> People are still doing yeah, people are still saying vanilla. Lightweight. Um, but yeah. It's been an interesting day trading. Hopefully tomorrow. Uh, yeah. have we got we've got major new we've got major news tomorrow. I think we do. We have, uh, is it, it's so Wednesday tomorrow at four. We have uh, Jackson Hole, Jackson Hole Symposium, which is a, they all, the Illuminati meet at a place called Jackson Hole and they discuss how they're going to take over the world and control us small people. And then you have mm. uh, so that's at sixteen sixteen hundred yeah. And then the Fed. Oh yeah, Yellen is got, Yellen uh, is speaking. Yeah, we got quite we got quite a bit of news tomorrow. I don't think I really want to be trading tomorrow by the looks of it. We'll see. But I don't want to. I don't want a choppy day. You know, we just waited around in shop all day. Um, you know, I think I think this today for me has been a good good experience because I I took three trades, but now you know going through it, it only one of them were actual. Uh, so I'm 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 trying I'm trying to go back to back testing, and I'm trying to ask myself, you know, whenever I take a trade live, ask myself, is this a trade that I would take in back testing? Because in back testing, I'm kind of you know disconnected from my own emotions, and uh, basically only one trade today is is a trade taken in in, in back testing. So now that that being said, all of the trades that you took today were decent trades. The trades that no, I took today. Well, I do feel we're we're decent decent trades. We just got chopped around a little bit. I think I think one well maybe maybe the short maybe the short wasn't a bit yeah yeah that that I think I think I think that's the one I'm yeah I think that's the one I'm referring to the 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 last short trade is like because I I even said like yeah I think that was like not not a bad trade but not a perfect trade so I think it's it's important that low lower lower probability trade yeah yeah. Yeah, and honestly, like if you if you if you're sitting there and you're you're looking at a trade and you're like, this is a low probability trade. Well, we're not supposed to be taking low probability trades, right? So, it not, I'm not saying that we made a mistake. I'm just saying that low probability trades are take lower risk, and that's why I put only half a percent on the on the trade. Definitely, that yeah. gold short was definitely. Thank God, I closed out of that. You know, after I took the scalp on gold, um, because <laughs> that flew yeah. as well. Imagine, imagine, uh, I by accident as well, I was only trying to put half of the size on because I was putting 10 lots on the other thing for some reason. I put 10 lots of gold on, I don't know how that happened, so I had to close out of that straight away. Oh, yeah, 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 but that was a good guest. I'm glad. I hope everybody enjoyed that. Uh, Paul Scott, legend of a guy, really funny. It'd be good if yeah, uh, type of person that you want to go to the pub with and have a beer with. Definitely got some funny stories. Like Gary Langley. You go to the pub with the uh, Langers, you come out extremely, extremely, extremely intoxicated, but you've had an amazing night because he just makes you laugh all night. I have a feeling that, you know, Gary's the type of person that if you take me to the pub, I'm, I'm going to start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> No, it's what we don't. Okay, let's go. Let's start it off. Let's boys do this. Girls. Uh, we got, we just literally got a thousand. So I'm going to be nice. giving that. So we literally just got a thousand. Let's do it. Now, everybody that are getting these, you've got to send me an email with your full name, full name, your ID, your email address with the screenshots of this screen and your youtube channel um, we've you know first come first serve so if somebody scams and they put all of their details then you know you lost it so make sure that don't happen if you don't give me the the right email it gets flagged by um compliance and they will close it if they can't find if they can't find uh where it's come from zero capital i swear if you've, you've had it before <clears throat> 
<laughs> yeah, I've seen him before. Yeah. I'll have to double it check. Did. Yeah, Zero Capital, I suppose, has had, had one before. Um... Okay, a bang. Let's go. I wonder what the altcoins are doing now. I haven't checked altcoins. They're not doing much. I think the well, they are obviously like if you zoom out, they're they're doing quite a lot. But looks like we're getting a local local top. Perfect, guys. I want you all to send me an email to alex at the fivers.com. Full name, ID, also screenshots of your YouTube channel and this. All of those things. Those are all the things that I need to be able to open your account on time and not go back and forwards a million times, you know, trying to get all that information before before giving the, uh, the stuff. Anyway, I'll let you go off. We're going to redirect you now to... Trade the pool with Mickey and Sol, Fiverr CEO. They're doing some trading right now. Um, so definitely stay and uh, jump into that because that is going to be a good one as well. Um, yeah, definitely. Jonathan, take it away. All right, guys. So tomorrow we have Gary Langley, the Scruffer Trader. Hopefully he's uh, he's he's got a call right now, but hopefully he feels better tomorrow. Uh, otherwise, if he can't join us, it's going to be me and Alex. If we're going to do some live trading, we're going to be... And uh, tomorrow we're going to be winning a lot of trades. We're going to be making a lot of money and we're going to be giving away a lot of accounts. Join us tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern, which is the same time as today's stream. All right, guys, take care and uh, hope to see you all in the next one. Hi, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. Now, make sure you like and subscribe. And most of all, go into the YouTube and check our other content.